Shopify grows your business no matter how far or big you grow. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. Whether you're selling your fans' next favorite shirt or an exclusive piece of podcast merch, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. Allbirds, Rothy's, Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's award-winning help is there to support your success every step of the way. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash income, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash income now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Have you ever had one of those runs that felt so effortless that you almost felt like you were floating? You're gliding through the air like you're flying, and you might even forget that your feet are touching the ground. If we were to film this amazing run you're having and watch it back in slow motion, we would see the moment of flight where both feet are in the air. As the right foot lands, the left foot moves forward through the air. Before it touches the ground, the right foot has already taken flight. Now compare this video to one taken of you while you're out for a walk. What's the difference? Airtime. When you walk, there's always a moment in your stride when both feet are touching the ground. This is called a double supported or bilateral movement. When you run, only one foot touches the ground at a time, which is called single supported or unilateral. And of course, there is a brief moment of unsupported airtime as you hop from one foot to the other. You'll take thousands of these hops every mile, and the impact force with each foot strike can be 5 to 12 times your body weight, much higher than walking. With that kind of repetitive force, it's no wonder so many runners get injured each year. And many runners simply don't take the time to do anything else besides run, and that leaves them vulnerable. But there is a way to mitigate the risk with a type of strength work called unilateral training. Welcome to The Planted Runner. I'm Coach Claire Bartholik, and my mission is to help you improve your running, your mindset, and your life with science-backed training and plant-based nutrition. In this episode, I'm going to explore why unilateral strength training is so important for runners, which exercises benefit runners the most, and this is important, when not to use unilateral movements, because as good as they are, they do have limitations. If you need more help running your best, you can order my book, The Planted Runner, Running Your Best with Plant-Based Nutrition, wherever you get books or request a copy from your local library. Or you can enter to win a copy for free just by writing an Apple Podcasts review. I choose a new winner every single month. Before we get into this episode, I want to sincerely thank you for listening, and I hope that you are becoming a better runner with every show. If you're ready to binge another great running podcast after this one, I recommend you check out Women's Running Stories. Sherry Turner creates audio stories told by the women she features. Recently, she shared the experience of Sika Henry at Comrades, a huge ultra race in South Africa, and it was fascinating. Give Women's Running Stories a listen and let me know what you think. And don't forget to stay tuned all the way to the end of the episode for another Mental Strength Minute. Fortify your mind in 60 seconds or less. Strength training in general has enormous benefits for runners. Research has shown that resistance training changes more than just your muscles. It also increases the strength of ligaments, tendons, joint cartilage, as well as the connective tissue sheaths within the muscle. It also has been shown to increase bone mineral content, which may aid in prevention of skeletal injuries like stress fractures. 
Resistance training can also aid in prevention and treatment of overuse injuries. Runners will have different overuse injuries compared to, for example, tennis players. And strength training specific to each sport can help correct any imbalances that increase injury risk. And that's where unilateral or one-sided training comes in. You can do all the traditional squats and deadlifts you want, but if you aren't strong on one leg at a time, you are losing efficiency when you run. A less efficient runner is slower, burns more energy, and very likely is less balanced from one step to the next, exposing themselves to injury. Unilateral work can help correct this. Let's start with the squat, for example. Both feet are on the ground as you lower into a seated position and push back up to standing. This is a classic move for runners for a good reason. It's a compound movement that builds strength and power in the quads, hamstrings, hips, and glutes. But if your right side happens to be just a touch stronger than your left side, continuing to squat bilaterally will not correct the imbalance. In fact, your dominant side will continue to assert its dominance, especially as you tire. Your strong side will get stronger and your weak side will never catch up. It's kind of like a doubles tennis match where the stronger partner keeps taking up the slack for the weaker one. The strong player ends up doing more work, which doesn't allow the weaker player to improve very much. Eventually, the stronger player will tire out from doing twice the work, exposing the team's vulnerability. If they were more equally matched, they'd be far more successful as a team. One solution to becoming a better doubles tennis player is to get better playing singles, where you have to do all the work yourself. The equivalent of singles tennis in the weight room is single-sided or unilateral training. With single leg squats or pistol squats, each side is engaged to do the work all by itself. Most people will quickly learn which side needs more work, and over time, you can get closer and closer to symmetry on both sides. Now, to be clear, no human being is perfectly symmetrical. Even Usain Bolt, one of the greatest runners of all time, doesn't have a perfectly balanced stride. Perfection's not the goal. The goal is to become symmetrical enough so that you don't notice a major difference from one side to the other when you perform single leg exercises. So which unilateral exercises are best for runners? I'll go over that right after this. I want to tell you about a unique opportunity for you to get stronger, faster, and stay motivated to hit all your running and nutrition goals this year, and that is to join the PR team. I started it last fall, and I have to tell you, it's even better than I imagined. Each member of the team gets a custom training plan made by me for you based on your unique fitness, goals, and lifestyle. Everything you need to crush your running dreams is included, such as strength training, recovery, and even cross training if you want it. I include weekly mental strength training as well as tips and nutrition guides. But here's where it gets really cool. The group has its own page in the app where we share workouts, ask training questions, and get feedback from me and the other teammates. And each week I create an exclusive private podcast just for the team based on the questions I get and what I see in their training each week. And I usually end up sharing behind the scenes and exclusive sneak peeks with the team that I don't share anywhere else. So instead of joining a Facebook group or sitting through another Zoom call, you get to listen to tailored advice on the run and you don't have to do all of this alone. So if you are ready to take your running to the next level and join an amazing team of runners, head to theplantedrunner.com slash group and join us today. It's more affordable than you think, and I can't wait to have you. Women's Running Stories, where we explore the intersection between running and life. Because every woman who is committed to a running journey has a story to tell, and this is where you'll find those stories. I am host and producer Sheree Louise Turner. I'm a 53-year-old runner, and together with original music by musician and runner Cormac O'Regan, we bring these inspirational stories to life. Please join us to fuel your adventures. 
Hear Her Sports is a podcast for everyone who loves stories by and about women striving to improve and make a difference in their lives. I am your host, Elizabeth Emery, a former professional cyclist. In every episode, I introduce a female athlete or woman in the business of sport through a thoughtful conversation about who they are and the terrific work they're doing. My guests and I explore the glorious and frustrating issues in sports, history, equity, training, nutrition, and so much more. Join us for inspiration, for community, and for love of being a strong athletic woman. I also wanted to let you know that a couple of spots have just opened up for the Asheville Running Retreat I'm hosting September 13th through 17th, 2023. We'll be staying in amazing luxury cabins right on the French Broad River Greenway where we can run right out the door. We'll explore the trails for a gentle run in the woods. We'll also get strength stretching and mental strength classes along with a gait analysis from the runner's mechanic and more. And we'll be sure to make time to catch the sunset over the Blue Ridge Mountains with a great group of runners of all abilities. If that sounds exactly what your running needs this fall, head to theplantedrunner.com slash retreat to book one of the last spots today. The best unilateral exercises for runners are generally the same moves that you would do bilaterally, but just done on one foot at a time. We've already talked about the single-legged squat. You'll also want to include the single-leg deadlift, single-leg glute bridge, single-leg calf raises, and lateral lunges or step-ups. One of my favorite unilateral moves is the single-legged Bulgarian split squat. You start by getting into a squat position while resting the top of one foot on a bench or a chair behind you. Keeping your knee and toes straight and your back upright, squat down in a slow and controlled motion and then push back up. To increase the difficulty, you can add weights. This is a very challenging move and it will definitely expose your weaknesses if you haven't tried this before. So start slowly, only using your body weight until you get the hang of it. Another bonus of unilateral work is that your core is forced to be engaged without doing a single sit-up. Imagine doing a biceps curl with just one arm and a heavy weight. In order to keep you from falling over, your core stiffens to stabilize your spine. Unilateral movement is core work in disguise. At this point, you might be convinced that unilateral training is so amazing that you're ready to ditch all the classic bilateral moves and do everything on one foot. Not so fast. Bilateral training is still critical and strengthens your body in a very different yet important way. The reason you don't want to totally ditch your two-legged squats, deadlifts, and all the other bilateral moves is because they can provide you with something that one-sided moves can't, and that's power. Unilateral moves are best for correcting imbalances, increasing coordination, and lowering injury risk. They make you better able to do the training that directly makes you into a faster runner. To truly focus on strength and power, we must lift with our entire bodies and focus on forced production. After all, the more forcefully you can push off the ground, the faster you can run. So while unilateral exercises have an important part in any runner strength training, especially if you are injured or injury prone, they're not adequate alone and shouldn't be the main way you get strong. If we go back to our tennis metaphor, yes, learning to get good at singles tennis will make you better at doubles. But if your goal is doubles tennis, you need to learn to work together as a team. The next drawback to many one-legged exercises is that they are often much harder to perform, especially if you're new to strength training. A pistol squat, for example, is extremely challenging for most people until they have some base of strength and mobility. Getting strong first with great two-legged squats is the solution. Because you're far more stable in a bilateral move, you can learn the timing and develop the strength to perform the exercise correctly before introducing the balance and coordination challenges of single leg movements. Once you're ready to add them in, remember that there are some modifications that will help make the transition easier. 
With our pistol squat example, you can start by not fully taking your front foot off the ground, but instead using your heel as kind of a kickstand. All the weight is on your back squatting leg, but your front heel provides just a little bit of balance and support. The same kickstand trick can also be used in deadlifts and front squats as well. Instead of floating one leg behind you in a one-legged deadlift, pop the non-working heel off the ground so that only the toes of that foot are touching the floor before starting the deadlift. For the front squat, same thing. Get into a standard squat position with your feet shoulder width apart. Then pop the heel of the non-working foot off the ground so it's only there for balance. Most of your weight is in the working leg. Once you get good at the kickstand moves, you can graduate to truly unilateral work. A solid strength training routine can be a big part of becoming a faster, stronger, less injury-prone runner. To help you out, I've created a series of Strength for Runners videos you can follow along with for free on YouTube. I'll continue making more of these, so be sure to let me know what you think in the comments. Of course, what you do in your running shoes each week is critical as well, but adding in some smart doses of both unilateral and bilateral strength training will give you the foundation to run your best for life. And now it's time for the Mental Strength Minute. Fortify your mind in 60 seconds or less. Today's topic is deliberate practice. In order to do well at a race, it's clear that you should prepare for the things that will happen on race day. We may follow a training plan that tells us what to do physically, but that might leave you unprepared for the mental challenges. Instead of simply going through the motions, study what steps it will take you to reach your goals, what obstacles you will face along the way, and how you can deliberately improve on your current skills. Learn why you are doing a particular speed workout or long run, and reflect on how each element of your work fits into the bigger picture of reaching your goal. In other words, don't just train. Train with intention and deliberately practice everything you need to be the runner you want to be. Thank you for listening to or watching The Planted Runner, part of the Evergreen Podcast Network. Don't forget that you can win a copy of my book for leaving an Apple podcast review. So be sure to write yours right after your run today. Reviews are the number one way to boost this show's reach. And it's a great way to tell me what you'd like to hear next, because I read every single one. Have a great run today. Sports stars. They're like superheroes. But they're actually real. Which is why we've made a podcast about them. You see, they've all got a story. But too many of these stories were cut short. Kobe Bryant. Payne Stewart. Flo jo, Phil Hughes. Justin Fashionew. We're writing episodes about all of them. And sadly, many more. Death of a Sports Star. A new series from Crowd Network. <laughs>